The lungs are the major organs of respiration. They are located in the chest, either side of the mediastinum. The bronchial tree, which is a series of passages that supplies air to the alveoli of the lungs, begins with the trachea, which divides into a left and right bronchus. Each bronchus enters the root of the lung, passing through the hilum. Inside the lung, they divide to form lobar bronchi, one supplying each lobe. Each lobe of bronchus then further divides into several tertiary segmental bronchi. The segmental bronchi give rise to many conducting bronchioles, which eventually lead into terminal bronchioles. Each terminal bronchiole gives off respiratory bronchioles, which feature thin walled outpocket in that extend from the lumens. These are the alveoli, the site of gaseous exchange. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is defined as a disease state characterized by airflow limitation that's not fully reversible. Emphysema and chronic bronchitis are the two most common conditions that contribute to chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. These two conditions usually occur together and can vary in severity among individuals with COPD. Separately, chronic bronchitis, a clinically defined condition, is inflammation of the lining of bronchial tubes that's characterized by cough and sputum on most days for at least three consecutive months for at least two successive years, which there's enlargement of mucus secreting glands and increase in number of goblet cells accompanied by an inflammatory cell infiltrate, result in increased sputum production and cough. <coughs> In case of emphysema, an anatomically defined condition which is abnormal permanent enlargement of the air spaces distal to the terminal bronchioles, accompanied by destruction of the walls without obvious fibrosis due to action of protease and oxidants. Generally, there may be also pulmonary vascular remodeling and impaired cardiac performance and loss of elastic tissue, inflammation and fibrosis in airway wall result in premature airway closure, gas trapping and dynamic hyperinflation leads to changes in pulmonary and chest wall compliance. Cigarette smoking represents the most significant risk factor for COPD that relates to both the amount and duration of smoking. It's unusual to develop COPD with less than 10 packs years, which is Average number of packs of cigarettes smoked per day multiplied by the total number of years of smoking and one pack year equal to 20 cigarettes per day per year. Occupation Coal miners and those who work with cadmium Ambient air pollution Passive or second-hand smoking exposure Genetic factors Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency COPD should be suspected in any smoker patient over the age of 40 years who presents with symptoms of chronic bronchitis and or dyspnea. The three most common symptoms in COPD are cough, sputum production, and exertional dyspnea. Cough and associated sputum production are usually the first symptoms, often referred to as a smoker's cough which is usually the initial symptoms of COPD. Frequently, a morning cough but becomes constant as the disease progresses. Second symptom is dyspnea, that dyspnea initially with exercise, but may progress to shortness of breath even at rest. Sometimes, patients may have difficulty in speaking in full sentences. Hemoptysis may complicate exacerbation of COPD, but should not be attributed to COPD without thorough investigation. Morning headaches, which may suggest hypercapnia. Physical signs are non-specific, correlate poorly with lung function, and are seldom obvious until the disease is advanced. Generally, the patient may have central cyanosis, especially in chronic bronchitis due to hypoxia. Weight loss, especially in emphysema, because of loss of appetite and tumor necrosis factor, TNF. Osteoporosis. In inspection, for special examination, first starts from trachea, which there may be reduction in size of it because of hyperinflation of the lungs. Hyperinflation of the lungs also can cause tracheal tug, which is the descent of trachea during inspiration. 
barrel chest shape, which is increase of anterior posterior diameter in relation to transverse diameter, mostly in emphysema. Use of accessory muscle of respiration. Persistently breathing, which is prolongation of expiration to keep some positive pressure in the airway to prevent collapse. Auscultation. Prolonged expiratory phase and may include expiratory wheezing. Inspiration crackles, especially in chronic bronchitis, may accompany infection but if persistent, raise the possibility of bronchiectasis. Pulmonary hypertension is severe enough to cause core pulmonary and right ventricular failure due to COPD. So in this case, there may be leg edema, elevated jugular venous pressure, and loud P2. Also, traditional teaching is that patients with predominant emphysema, termed pink puffers, are thin and non-cyanotic at rest and have prominent use of accessory muscles. And patients with chronic bronchitis are more likely to be heavy and cyanotic, blue blower. Current evidence demonstrates that most patients have elements of both bronchitis and emphysema. The diagnosis requires objective demonstration of airflow obstruction by spirometry and is established when post-bronchodilator FEV1 is less than 80% of the predicted value and accompanied by FEV1 per FVZ less than 70%. The reduced FEV in COPD seldom shows large response to inhaled bronchodilators. Although there are no reliable radiographic signs that correlate with the severity of airflow limitation, but a chest X-ray is essential to identify alternative diagnoses such as cardiac failure, other complications of smoking such as lung cancer, and the presence of bullae. A full blood count is useful to exclude anemia, and in younger patients with predominantly basal emphysema, alpha-1 antitrypsin should be assayed. Management First, smoking cessation. Every attempt should be made to highlight the role of smoking in the development and progress of COPD, advising and assisting the patient towards smoking cessation. Bronchodilators Bronchodilator therapy is central to the management of breathlessness. The inhaled route is preferred and short-acting bronchodilators such as the beta-2 agonist salbutamol and terbutaline or the anticholinergic ipratropium bromide, corticosteroids in severe cases, oxygen therapy in special case.